Morning, family. Wherever you are watching this this morning, as we come together as an act of worship on this, the second Sunday in 2022. Last week, we started the year on the very last chapter, on the very last book of the Bible. In your Bible, it is probably called Revelation or the Revelation of John, also known as the Apocalypse of John. But as I've been reading through Revelation and thinking about our church over the past um, weeks, I've, I've been left wondering how many of you have read this book regularly. Now, be honest this morning. How many of you have read from Revelation in the past year? Now, I know that many find this book somewhat overwhelming, even, even scary, and very difficult to understand with all the imagery that it carries. Last week, we spoke about John valiantly trying to describe that which he, he was seeing. Uh, think about uh, the limitations of words and, and, and the understanding of the times in which he lived. And then there are the languages his words have been translated to in the meantime and the passing of a, of a couple of thousand years. The changes in the culture of the world around us due to the development of our civilization. It's no wonder that it can be a little daunting to study Revelation. And then, of course, there's that word apocalypse. The Cambridge Dictionary defines it as an event resulting in great destruction and violent change. The dictionary also stated, in the Bible, the apocalypse is the total destruction of the world. Remember, the apocalypse is the book of Revelation. Is that really what this book is all about? Destruction? What is the real meaning of, of uh, behind this word apocalypse anyway? On Thursday night, the praise team were exposed to an apocalypse right in the church sanctuary. Let me explain. We, we practice in the church sanctuary on Thursday evenings. The, this past Thursday was real busy and my, my son Kabani and I arrived a, a little after everyone else. We parked in front of the church and I grabbed my guitar bag from the back seat of the car and swung it up onto my back. And uh, I locked the car and proceeded to, to hurry into the church. I'd only gone a few steps when the weight on my shoulder lifted as the strap broke. And there was a sickening crunch as the bag filled with my vintage 12-string guitar hit the bricks. Feeling absolutely sickened, I picked up the bag and hurried inside, knowing that the crunching sound that had come from that bag was very, very bad news. As I hurried into the sanctuary, I, I explained what had happened and I was busy unzipping the bag. And it was right at that moment that the team experienced the apocalypse at five minutes past six last Thursday evening in the front rows of the sanctuary of our church. Now, perhaps you're thinking that I'm talking about the destruction of the guitar. And, and yes, you would be right. It was severely damaged, perhaps terminally. We wait to see. And they did see the damage. However, what it really meant was that they saw the guitar being removed from its cover. You see, the original Greek word apocalypse means to unveil, to remove, to uncover or to reveal. That's our we came to revelation out of apocalypse. So what does this book uncover for us? What does it reveal to us? Is this a book about destruction? Or is it something completely different? Too often we're caught up in hope-destroying, non-productive conspiracies about dates and times, about raptures and wars and, and destruction of the world. And as we try to put our human spin on God's revelation of His Son, Jesus. Personally, I believe that the apocalypse of John is, is so much more than the prediction of the destruction of the world or, or a calendar giving us insight into dates and times or even a great puzzle to be solved. You see, I believe that it reveals the one we have come together today to worship, the one who is making all things new, the one who will complete the work that He has started. T.E. Martin said, regardless of the amount of 
prediction there is, and he's talking about the book of Revelation here. The whole book is filled with confirmation. So that blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. It's not a timetable of tomorrow. It is the assurance that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the one who was and is and is to come. He is the faithful witness, the firstborn from among the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. So last week we, we started at the end, the epilogue. So today, let's turn to the beginning, the prologue. The introduction of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it. Because the time is near. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, who was, and who is to come. And from the seven spirits before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming on the clouds, and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. Let's pray together. Almighty God, thank you for your word this morning. It's a lamp to our feet, Lord, and a light unto our paths. Lord Jesus, thank you for the internal encouragement and the hope that we have in you. Please, Lord, continue to speak into our hearts this morning. Strengthen us, Lord, so that we may go out and do every good deed which you have prepared in advance for us to do. Have your way, Lord, with each of us today, we pray, in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I need to be honest and upfront with you this morning. I have a selfish motive for digging into this book today. After the, the last few years of challenging times in this world in which we live, ha, I think we could use some blessing, don't you? Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it. Because the time is near. Yes, I am reading these words out loud. And I'm trusting that you who hear them will take them to heart and put them into action in your lives. I love this particular verse. It reminds me of a very special lady who lived with her daughter and son-in-law not, not too far from, from the church. It was her habit to sit on the sun porch of their home, directly outside the bedrooms, very early every morning, weekends included. And as she sat there, enjoying the early morning, she read very loudly from the Bible. And when asked why she read so loud, she quoted this verse saying, The Bible says, I will be blessed if I read it loud. And so she did. But here's the amazing thing. You see, the blessings are also for those who hear and take it to heart, right? <laughs> I want you to know something. A good number of that household 
have been baptized right in the Cornerstone Church of the Nazarene over the past few years. Praise God. Blessed are those who hear the word and take it to heart. Yesterday, my family and I took a trip out to Denaceville. It's, it's just across um, into the, the province on um, bordering Gauteng, the province called the Free State. Um, it's right on the Vaal Dam, on the Vaal River. And we went across to Denaceville to see the Vaal Dam um, wall with its sluice gates open. I want to tell you that it's been a very long time since I last saw that part of our country looking so beautiful. Normally the road is dull and dreary and brown and I suppose pretty depressing. But now it's so green with the, the wildflowers showing through wherever you look in great swathes of purple and yellow and pink and blue. It's just so beautiful. You know, God said through Isaiah, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. My hope is that as we continue in the coming weeks to read the words of this prophecy out loud, that God's word will water your soul and bless you as you turn to him, that your life will flourish and flower in the midst of this chaotic world around us. Let's get stuck in this morning, shall we? Here we have John, the last of the disciples, banished to the island of Patmos, most probably to silence him. Patmos was a place set aside for, for political and, and religious prisoners. While on the island, John has the most incredible theophany. Yes, you remember, that means a sighting of God. God sends an angel to John with messages for the church. And John experiences a series of visions of, of wonderful things. Some scary too. Now, the people John was writing to were truly struggling. The persecution of the church was in high gear, and, and the message given was for them in their difficulty. But it's a message that speaks to you and to me in our difficulty this morning too. Grace and peace to you from him who is, who was, and who is to come. What a greeting. But there's something in this that caught my attention from him who is, who was, and who is to come. Normally, we would use the grammatically correct way of doing things. Uh, and, and that is the past, the present, and the future, right? Who was, who is, and who is to come. But John doesn't do it that way. He starts in the present. Who is? I am. Hmm. Who is? I think... It's important because the present, Christ with me, the hope of glory with me right now, the present determines how I understand my past and how I will look to the future. In, in fact, Paul continued where he, where he was talking to the Philippians about Christ in me, the hope of glory. He continued to say, he is the one we proclaim admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ, in Christ, present in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Again, he's working it in you and I right now as he was working it in Paul right there and then. It's also a reminder of something else. As I, as I just mentioned, God says, I am. A statement that Jesus also used on a number of occasions. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the vine, Jesus said. But he also said, surely I am 
with you always. I am. It's to be present. And so he is with us. Amen. He is with us. John wrote, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Darkness and light, good and evil. The world into which this prophecy first came was a dark, dark place. Jerusalem had been destroyed. The church was being persecuted. You know, many, many years before Solomon said that there was nothing new under the sun. And so today we find that the world in which we live in is also a dark place, a difficult place in which to live. And as we focus on the darkness if we focus on the evil and the difficulties, we get sucked in. And it's a downward spiral. But the light shines in the darkness. The one who is the I am. And if we will just turn and focus on him, the darkness will not overcome it. Friends, if we stand in a long passage without a light and it is dark, and at one end there is a candle. If we stand in the middle of that passage and we face the dark end of the passage, we will see very little other than darkness. But if we turn around, we will see that that darkness has not extinguished the candle, the light on the other end of the passage. Last week we closed the service with Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. It's this Jesus that John says is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He loves you and he's saving you even as we meet together right now. We have favor because he is. But he was. He was with God in the beginning, the one who was involved in the creation of everything. The one who became flesh and gave up his life as he, as he freed us from our sins by his blood. His sacrifice paved the way for us to be reconciled to God. Our past wiped clean. We've been freed from the guilt and shame of our sin. We are forgiven because he was. And John says, look. He is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the people on the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. It reminds me that Paul said, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. And Jesus promises that he is coming back for us. Last week, we said the correct question for us to ask is not when is he coming back, but rather, am I ready? Are you ready? ready. He is the firstborn from the dead, giving us hope for eternal life. He says that we'll have new bodies, imperishable bodies, just like his. He's going to make right all that is wrong. He says there will be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain. In other words, we will not be left to our own resources. We will not be forsaken because he is coming back. This Jesus who stands together with us right now interprets where we've been and where we are going. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. This is what the book of Revelation is all about. The I Am who is with us right now. The I Am who has always been present and the I am who will always be present. He is the light that shines in the darkness because of whom we have been favored, forgiven, and never forsaken. Almighty God, creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the one who is worthy of all honor, and praise and glory. Thank you for the assurance this morning that you are with us. For the reminder that no matter how difficult the situation in which we find ourselves, you are here for us and with us. And that you will never be overcome 
by the evil that is so prevalent in the world around us. That we are highly favored, forgiven, and never forsaken. As we go out into the world as a kingdom of priests serving you, would you grant us the courage to tell the wonderful story of what you are doing in our lives? Would you grant us the wisdom, Lord, to have answers for those who ask about this great hope that we have in you? We pray this in the powerful, precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Family, thank you for sharing together with us this morning. As we go out into the world uh, this week, may the Lord go with you. May his face radiate with joy because of you. And may he grant you his peace as you live in him and through him today, tomorrow, and so forever in the wonderful name of Jesus. Please be uh, aware of the, the announcements that will roll after the service this morning. Stay safe and be blessed. Mm -hmm.